Hello everyone! Today on my hobby table we have new GNOME version 2, provided to me by Big Tritage. And in this video we will figure out how to customize this, how to set up an environment to build your own firmware, and what kind of parts you will need to print in order to get it working. Let's get into it. And in the box we have simple piece of paper, the next one sticker, GNOME itself, little antenna and power cord. Also another paper with brief specification and I have a little suggestion for Big Tritage. You guys used to do those kind of stickers, like this is a logotype and everything exactly the same, but this one has pin out for the stepper motor in this case. And why not to add exactly the same in a box? What's the problem to put a diagram in here? That would be so handy, you don't need to go on a website to figure out how to wire things and what's the pin out. Okay, that's all what we have in the box and let's get right to the device itself. So I have played with this device off camera and I have configured myself custom theme. This device actually easy to work around. There is a pretty good documentation at this point. The screen of this model exactly the same as version one, but it has touch functionality. It will be helpful while unloading or loading filament in and we will see how actually touch screen is useful on the tool head. We have little camera interface right here Unfortunately, it is not implemented at this point, but Big Tritage told me that it is in a work. Compared to first generation, unfortunately, version 2 has only 5 volts input power, which is a major downside, by my opinion, as it is actually reduces the crowd of people who can uh, buy this product to the only people who already have 5 volts on their tool head. Let's say via EVB CAN model, such as uh, SB2240 or SB2209. Also, this uh, board has accelerometer built in, but it's only used for displaying forces on the screen, which your tool had experiencing. Kind of interesting information while you're printing to see it. Gnome version 2 has external Wi-Fi antenna. And the first version, I used to have several instances where Gnome was losing a connection, but it is hard to say if it was related to poor Wi-Fi signal. So time will show how signal will perform. Finally, version 2 comes with over-the-air upgrade functionality pre-installed, so we can load the firmware via Wi-Fi and you don't have to disassemble the tool head in order to upgrade it. I know you can use current code to generate exactly the same firmware for your version 1, but it is nice to have out of the box because in several instances I wanted to upgrade my version 1 and I wasn't able to do it when it initially came out. I'm really happy to see that out of the box, we finally have an opportunity to pick default user interface color scheme, which I think is an essential feature to the device that we install on a custom 3D printers with custom color schemes. Problem is that some of the emojis you have built in here still are not controlled by that color scheme. But again, as I mentioned, we'll go through the process and I will show how I change colors on my specific unit. And let's move over my computer and I will describe how to set up custom animations and change colors of original GIF files. And before we start, you need to read the documentation for Gnome 1 and Gnome 2. You will need the link for Victory Tech Gnome GitHub repository. I will share all the links in the description. The master branch actually has pre-built pre-compiled firmwares and documentations and STL files, but firmware has source code that we will need in order to customize the GNOME. To start in, you want to install Visual Studio Code and add Platform IO ID plugin. This plugin with VS Code will automatically assemble our developer environment. It will help us to get in speed as fast as possible. I'm going to download the zip file for the firmware. I'm going to open it and drop it off into the Explorer. Whenever you do it, VS Code will start automatically pulling dependencies and preparing environment for us. Give it a time, it will install all the packages you need. Project was successfully assembled and dependencies pulled. You have opportunity to build firmware for two versions of Gnome. If you click on the bottom, in this case, we are going to play around with Gnome 1. It is going to pull libraries. The next step will be to just run a plain build and see if everything runs smoothly and it can build the firmware. Looks like the build was successful. We go in .pio, builds and gnome1 and here our firmware.bin file. 
next step will be to prepare our GIF files. All the GIF files are stored in a C format and there is a tool, the link also in the description. This is online image converter. You just throw in the file you want to convert, your GIF or your image, pick the CF row, output format CRA, convert it, save it in this directory. You don't have to define new files. You can just replace one of those that you don't like. Let's say you want to replace standby. Like in my case, I replaced it with my channel logger. To get default faces changed, you will need to pull original GIFs. On the GNOME version 1 documentation page, you can click on the customize UI and scroll down, find the link, which you click and download original GNOME GIFs. Into the Photoshop, I take one of those GIFs, just throw it in. I pick all the layers, use hue saturation and moving hue slider around, you can set up the color you probably like. If you want to upload any kind of GIF, let's pull the GIF. I'm going to just save image as simple GIF file, throw it in the Photoshop. We need to scale the size to fit the GNOME screen. Resolution of 240 by 240 pixels and ratio is one to one. So we kind of move around, get the ratio and we're going to just simply export it in size of 240 by 240. I'm just going to replace existing GIF file Next, we're going to open image converter. We need to pick CF row. I'm going to pick our file. Let's see what files we have right here as images. I will use, let's say, GIF warrant to replace it. Put the name in, convert, source, GIFs, and save it right here. Make sure the name exactly the same as the name of the existing images. This is the most easiest way to upgrade the theme save and replace, build new firmware, build. After build is finished, we open our GNOME, use update firmware functionality over the air. Our firmware located in GNOME version one or GNOME version two, click firmware, open. It is going to be uploaded over the GNOME via the Wi-Fi. The update is successful. If you don't have over there upgrade, what you can do, you can plug in your GNOME via USB-C by holding boot button on the device and use upload functionality into the VS code. It will automatically flash the controller of the, your device. And that is how everything looks like. You can see our GIF animation on the screen and we've done it. Don't get me wrong, I still think it is pretty much a toy, something that can add a little bit of personality to your printer but here where the most people will comment. This is extra weight on my tool head. Why I even bother to put it in? Exactly the same way as happened when I initially posted the video about first generation of this device. Guys, you can just mount it on the side of your printer or print a little case to keep it on your work desk in case you don't have direct access to your printer to monitor status while it is printing. If you worried about the weight, my printer already printing at the volumetric flow limit and I can't really feel the difference in weight at those speeds. This is the part you will need to print in order to mount this tool head and this is very challenging part. I think Big Tritesh need to spend a little bit of time and just tiny touch improve this model. I'll show you what I mean. Here, the first attempt to print this. This little thing is so thin right here, so basically two layers. And while peeling it off the bed, it just basically got off. And there is no way for me to recover from this print. I recommend Orca Slicer. It has very nice settings where it actually prints with thick bridges. You can see here my first attempt doing a bridges. This is ABS. And my second attempt with this setting, so much nicer. Overall part is kind of hard to do, but it's manageable. If we compare those parts together, I can see that channels for the air are significantly bigger and I assume that was due to some of the limitation of the airflow. I personally, the first version, didn't really notice much of a difference and I print a lot of ABS. It does not require maximum flow if you want to cool part down, but this is a nice improvement. So for you it's going to be a second, but now I will just simply swap the parts. And here, how I wired everything. We have antenna behind, it's not touching anything, not anyhow interacting with the pins on the back of this little board. We have five volts coming from 
the board itself too, our fans and LEDs. Wiring could be better, but it is good enough for the moment. Maybe I will adjust it later. When I assemble tool heads, we can compare them to each other. And you can see that Nomi version 2 is flush with the tool head. I really like this look. Here's how much space we have inside compared to other version. Okay, let's install front cover on the tool head and see how it will work. And we're going to do a first boot sequence. Printer started. Let's take a look at the touch functionality and how it feels on Economy 2. So I have I have changed default settings and reduced the amount of options that we have for retraction settings. I never go above 100 millimeters and never extrude less than 50 millimeters from the interface. And I never go faster than five millimeters and slower than three millimeters on extrusion. Regarding the temperature, it kind of have negative. Why do we need negative? Guys, just remove that. Let's scroll in the other direction. We have opportunity to pick ABL home and quad gantry level. Quad gantry level doesn't work for me. I have Z tilt in my warrant trident. I don't know why we don't have opportunity to change this option into the web interface. Big three touch, take a look at that. Now we don't want to home. The next thing is we have opportunity to set up a preheat presets. I have tap right here and I had to change settings in the firmware to have tool head preheating to 150 otherwise it is not safe if you want to change ui color you just scroll further and pick whatever color you want for your interface and that's pretty much for the touch screen functionality what i notice right now because i have everything tightened all the way like the plate is mounted very tight the whole tool head mounted pretty tight. The touch screen is behaving weirdly. So I assume it is kind of a problem with actual design. Maybe it is touching the touch screen and kind of messing up with the readings on the touch screen. And that's it for this video. Very interesting device. Leave your like, subscribe, let the force be with you. See you at the next one. Bye bye.